Let's learn how to automate our Git actions using Claude code. Git can be kind of confusing, especially for beginners. So we're gonna use Claude code to simplify everything. Let's see how that can work in a few different scenarios. So here I have this Git action that I built and I want to put it in a new branch and open a pull request. So let's just ask Claude to do exactly that. So here I'm using the Claude CLI tool. I'm saying Claude, and then I'm giving it the prompt to open a new branch, commit this GitHub action file, and then open a PR. So let's run this and see what happens. So Claude opens up and it starts doing all of the tasks that I asked it to do. Now it's asking me if it can use some commands on my system and I'm going to allow it. Now this is where you have to kind of mold it into your situation. Here it's actually wanting to create that new GitHub workflow, but I already have one. I have this build.yaml file. It's trying to create a new one and saying maven.yaml. Well, that's not really what I want. So I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to tell it no and tell Claude what to do differently. So I'm just responding with the build.yaml already exists, so it doesn't need to create it. Now, as it's processing, it notices that the file does already exist. So it's not going to create a new one. And instead, it's going to just commit the changes. Now it's asking me if it can use the git log commands and I'll also allow this one. We continue on and it always auto generates this prompt saying that it was generated with Claude code. And I think that's just a part of the tool itself. If you wanted to change this, you could always say no and tell Claude what to do differently and then change that git message. I'm fine with that auto generated message. At least I know it was created by Claude code if I'm just looking at the repository commits. So I'll click yes. Now it's creating the PR. Then it notices that I have the GitHub CLI tool. So it's just using that by default as opposed to just using raw Git CLI. This gives it the ability to actually create the PR from the command line on GitHub. So do I wanna proceed? Yes, I do. So I let it continue. It finally finished and it tells me that a PR was created and this is the link to it. So if we open this guy up on GitHub, we can see that we have the summary here, added GitHub action, and it was also running that build. Now we have this Java CI with Maven build pull request. So not only did it create the PR for me, the PR also had the action in it. So it ran the action and we see that it passed. So now with all of our checks passed, we can just merge this pull request. And that's what I'll do. I'll click on merge pull request. I don't really care about the commit message. So I'm just gonna hit confirm merge. And that was super easy to commit and create a pull request just from our command line. And if we check the cost, we can see that it cost me 11 cents to do all of that interaction. Now that probably could have been cut down a little bit more if I was more descriptive when I initially put in the prompt. One of the key things, especially about this AI, is that you need to be as descriptive as possible as to what you want. Otherwise, it's just going to start inferring things and then create a larger cost for you. So let's check out something else. In this repository, I actually have two different branches and they're both on two different commits. What I want to do is I want to merge the main branch into this Discord bot updates branch. So let me move this out of the way and I'm going to prompt Claude to do exactly that. So I'm going to tell Claude to merge the main branch into the Discord bot updates branch and resolve any merge conflicts, then commit and push the changes. So let's see what it does. Okay, it looks like it's going on the right track. It's asking me to use the git merge commands. Now again, this is pretty finicky. So sometimes you look at this and you need to hit escape if there's a problem that's arising. I asked it to merge the main branch into the Discord bot updates branch, but instead it used the add GitHub actions branch. So when it gets off the rails like this, we just need to make sure that we prompt it correctly. So here I copied and pasted the same prompt, but I also added, make sure you're merging into the Discord bot updates branch that is created on local. You may need to switch to that branch in order to do the merge. I'm hoping this triggers the AI to switch branches and not just use the add GitHub actions branch, but we'll see. Okay, it looks like it picked up the Discord bot updates branch that looks promising. And look at that, it actually did the merge. It says the merge from main into Discord bot updates has been completed successfully and pushed to the remote repository. What's cool is it ran that git merge command and then it noticed that there was a problem when it tried to push. It was saying like, this is not an upstream branch and then it realized, oh, it did it wrong and then updated it and pushed to the correct branch. Okay, cool. So to check our cost again, we're now at 21 cents. That means that took about 10 cents to do all of that. Next, let's see how we can review a PR. What's cool is there's already a pre-configured command inside of the Claude CLI that allows you to review PRs. So let's use forward slash review and check it out. So it's asking me once again to use the GitHub CLI to view all of the PRs that are in the repository. Now it wants to examine the diff in the PR. 
Okay, it looks like it completed. Let's see what review it gave us. Okay, you can see that the code review for PR number one, improved command registration system. And then in the overview, this PR refactors the command registration system to make it more modular and maintainable. The key features include adding a git command data method to the command interface, updating command listener to expose commands map with a getter, modifying Discord bot to dynamically register commands from the command listener. That's cool. And then it goes through some of the code quality stuff and styling. It goes through some suggestions for improvement, some error handling and command listener could be used because there really isn't any. It's thinking that maybe the command registration timing, we could do it earlier. Um, and then we could add more documentation. Also, it's telling me that there are no tests created, which is true. There aren't any tests in here, uh, which we might actually want to look into creating tests for all of the stuff that we did inside of this PR. Oh, look, and it even gives you potential issues slash risks. The changes appear to be well-contained and low risk. The only potential issue is if commands expected their registration to happen in a specific order as using the stream approach may not preserve ordering. Well, this is a really nice detailed overview of the PR. It's cool because a lot of the times when people open up PRs, they might have like a short description about what's inside of it, but this actually gives you a pretty good rundown of what exactly is happening. You can definitely use this as a tool to review PRs and it will help tremendously. But let's check the cost one more time. I'm at 31 cents for this entire video and that meant that that review took about 10 cents to do. Now you can imagine pretty much the sky's the limit with what you can do with Cloud Code. Like it doesn't just have to end with these three things that I showed today you could do any number of things within Git. You can even ask it to architect an entire branching scheme if you wanted to. Add any questions or comments you might have about Cloud Code or about this video and I'll try to answer them. And those are a few ways that you can automate your Git actions in your repository using Cloud Code.